Look, it's Vince Terraceman Stewart. That joke doesn't work in America. Hi, Internet. I'm Steve, and this is Raffo. Continuing on with our analysis of the metallic arts, we come to ferrukemi, pronounced like biochem, not ferrukemi like my brain wants it to be. Thanks to everyone who called me out on that. Over and over again. My last video talked about Allomancy, the flashiest of the magics on Scadriel, the planet of Mistborn, and Ferrukemi is pretty similar in one main respect, the use of metal as the focus or key for investiture. However, there are some massive differences in terms of application and abilities of its users. In order to get this, you have to understand exactly where the investiture comes from. This is going to get into Realmatics and Shards, so if you don't yet know what those are, check out these other videos first. Every living thing in the Cosmere has a tiny bit of investiture called the Spark of Life. Presumably, that's the little flame you can see in the Cognitive Realm. Depending on where you're from, many humans also have a little bit extra called Innate Investiture, which seems to have to be specifically granted or connected to a shard. Native Nalthians have breath from endowment, Elantrians have a connection to the door, Scadrians have a little piece of preservation in them, and even Rosharans apparently have something extra. Brandon has said that this innate investiture causes the person to be a conduit to or from the spiritual realm. Theoretically, the stream of investiture coming through this connection is what allows access to the magic systems of the patron shard. Allomancers direct a flow of preservation's investiture using metals as a key. The door obeys an Elantrian's instructions given through Aeons, and Kaladin can make poor life choices and cry. Ferrochemists are a little bit different, though, because ferrochemy is end-neutral. They don't gain access to preservation's investiture when they're using their power. They're able to redirect a stream of their own innate investiture. That's an important distinction. The energy comes from the user, not from the shard. Because the investiture is their own, ferrochemists have much more control over how that investiture is used. The user can store certain abilities or attributes within a metal mind, a piece of the appropriate metal used as a spiritual battery, typically some type of jewelry or wearable ornamentation, and then tap those metal minds to bring forth that stored power. Not literally tap, and not like the Magic the Gathering tap. Conceptually, it's like tapping a maple tree or a wine barrel, allowing access to what's stored within, which I guess is the same concept as in Magic, but you don't have to knock on or twist a metal mine to get it to work. The same metals used in Allomancy, even the same percentages of the alloys, are used in Ferrukemi. The application, or attribute they're keyed to, is not necessarily the same. So take everything you know about what metals do, and coin shoot it out the window. Rather than being based on effect, the table for Ferrukemi is realmatically based, being broken into the quadrants of physical, mental, spiritual, and hybrid, which is actually just another physical. Although it's set up similarly to the Allomancy table, same metals, same groupings, same pairs of pure and alloy, the distinction of internal versus external pulling or pushing kind of breaks down. For example, zinc, which in Allomancy is an external pulling metal, stores mental speed in ferrochemy. Definitely an internal thing. In fact, one of the reasons the ferrochemy table took so long to produce is that Isaac apparently kept thinking like an Allomancer. He also accidentally switched the symbols for chromium and nigrosil, so technically it's supposed to be this way. Although he said that that will apparently be resolved in future printings? The individual metals do some really interesting stuff, especially when you consider the physics behind them. While a full ferrochemist would be able to do all of these things, by era 2 there have arisen fairings, basically the ferrochemist version of allomantic mistings. So here are all the different ferrochemical powers, each with at least one mini-theory to keep things exciting. Skimmer fairings, who can store and tap iron, are able to store physical weight. It's not like they fluctuate between super fat and emaciated, their appearance doesn't change, but their mass changes, making them more or less affected by gravity. This may actually be related to the Higgs field, the energy field that all particles in the universe interact with, and by which they gain mass. Tapping or storing iron either increases or decreases the user's interaction with that field, literally giving them more or less mass. SCIENCE! While tapping doesn't affect a person physically, users do gain additional strength proportional to their increased mass, so they can actually still move while weighing an extra 400 pounds. A steel runner who uses steel stores physical speed, making them feel like they're walking through molasses while storing, and then moving blindingly fast while tapping. It's possible that this is some type of storage of kinetic energy. 
A steel runner, like a skimmer, is granted additional strength in proportion to their speed, so they're able to withstand the G's they put themselves through. But they're still affected by wind resistance and friction, which means if they run too fast, it'll get pretty toasty. Potentially, steel ferrukemi may also increase the speed of the user's brain as well, so they're not slamming into walls before they register them as existing. Wind whisperers have access to tin, and are able to store specific senses, each in a different metal mind. In relation to the traditional five, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch, a wind whisperer can selectively dampen or heighten certain senses. Useful if you're changing a nasty diaper, storing smell, basically plugging your nose, or trying to read a menu that's too far away, tapping sight, giving yourself binoculars. It's possible to store other, less well-known senses too, pain, proprioception, even feeling elementic pulses with bronze. In fact, if such a thing as a ferrochemist platypus existed, it could technically store its electrical field sense in a tin mine. Makes me wonder if it's possible to spike animals. Ferrochemists who have access to pewter, appropriately named brutes, store physical strength. This one gets kind of weird, because it's not like alimantic pewter, where your muscles just get extra strong. No, no. When a ferrochemist stores strength in a pewter mine, their muscle mass actually decreases, literally making them scrawny. When they tap it, the additional strength comes not from investiture, but from more and bigger muscles. Pewter therefore doesn't store strength, it literally stores muscle mass. Silly Steve Rogers was just storing strength for the first 20 years of his life. Then when he finally learned how to tap it, we all wanted to tap it. What would happen if you took a muscle biopsy from a brute? Zinc ferrochemists are called sparklers. Sparkers! They're able to store their mental speed, the first metal in the mental quadrant of our table. A sparker storing... You were literally too stupid to insult. Thank you. A sparker tapping. One interesting thing to note is that zinc doesn't boost your brain up to higher speeds, it increases the speed of the natural processes your brain goes through when you think. Your brain uses roughly 20% of the calories you intake, so tapping zinc is like making your brain sprint. It's going faster, but it uses more calories. So when you tap zinc, you also get the munchies. Next in the mental quadrant is brass, which stores warmth. Yeah, not actually a mental ability. Brandon belatedly realized that Sazed tapped a brass mind for warmth in book one instead of an electrum mind. They couldn't know about electrum yet. So the effects of those metals got canonically switched, which is fine because ferrochemi obeys its own rules and totally isn't just an oops. Brass users are called fire souls because brass doesn't store the feeling of warmth, it stores the actual heat. A ferrochemist would actually become cooler when filling a brass mine, to the point of being resistant to fire or other heat damage. No sunburns? A steel runner could likely use brass to neutralize the heat from air resistance at high speeds. In fact, the continued development of mechanical investiture access would brass ferrochemical heat shields be possible? The ability we're most familiar with is copper. Sazed in Mistborn Era 1 stored info about all his favorite religions in his handy dandy copper mines. This preserved them as if they were freshly memorized, only degrading whenever he put them back into his brain. There must be some way to organize all those stored memories, and archivists will usually memorize some sort of index in order to be able to sort through everything. Going along with the technology advancement thread, will mechanical copper mines eventually be used as ferrochemical hard drives? Also, according to Locke's memory theory, one's personal identity only extends so far as their own consciousness their memories. B.J. Neblett said it this way, We are the sum total of our experiences. Those experiences, be they positive or negative, make us the person we are at any given point in our lives. So would it be possible for an archivist to fundamentally mess with their spiritual identity by dumping large portions of their memories into a copper mine? That's the type of question that can keep you up at night. Speaking of, bronze! Ferrochemical bronze stores wakefulness, and it's the only metal mine that you can actively fill while sleeping. Bronze users, or sentries, can presumably sleep for days at a time, and then tap that store to go without sleep. Contrary to just having manic depression, a tapped bronze mind actually does provide all the benefits of a good night's sleep. It's not just a caffeine patch. Interestingly, this was the very first ferrochemical power Brandon envisioned as an insomniac in high school. Mini theory for this one. Um, would a bronze user have to eat more, similar to a sparker, because of the increased caloric demand of being awake rather than asleep? Could they potentially develop insomnia due to underutilization and therefore 
atrophy of sleep hormone producing structures? Could the heightened alertness of tapping while already awake become addictive? Could the various processes that happen during sleep be separated out and stored into other bronze mines? For example, protein synthesis and a growth hormone release, then used individually, like after a workout? Wow. I thought I wouldn't have many theories about this one, but then they kind of just kept rolling out. Now comes the hybrid quadrant, otherwise known as Physical 2, Electrum Boogaloo. Gaspers are able to use cadmium to store breath. Not breath, but breath. When storing, gaspers have to hyperventilate in order to get enough oxygen. Tapping allows them to go without breathing, or, and this is important, hyperoxygenate their blood. From that, we know that cadmium doesn't just store the need to breathe, it stores the actual oxygen. Oxygen is a flammable gas. Does that mean if you had a way to mechanically tap an invested cadmium mine, could you create something like a blowtorch? Or could they be used to supply oxygen in life support systems? Bendeloy, also known on Earth as Woods Metal for you collectors, stores caloric energy, or nutrition. A subsumer can eat as much as they want and never get full, <clears throat> then tap to go for long periods without food. Basically, they have an external reserve stomach for food and liquid. The question is then raised, when do they poop? Does a bendeloy mind store ATP, glucose, or the actual food? In one case, a subsumer would have a lot in their system, regardless of whether they stored anything or not. In the other, the poops would come regularly with tapping. But then if they tap a huge amount at once, explosive diarrhea? Blood makers store health! A ferrochemist with a full gold mind can tap to heal themselves from injuries that would normally be fatal or to just heal up quickly from minor things. However, in order to store in a gold mine, blood users have to spend time being weak and sickly. And if they get sick while filling a gold mine, they'd have to tap it to heal, but then that would... We've seen two blood makers on screen, Wayne and Miles, but Miles cheats in a way that we'll explain later because it gets too complicated and this video is too long already. Ferrochemical gold healing works in the same way most Cosmere healing does aligning the physical with the spiritual, and is even able to heal spiritual damage, like from a hemallergic spike or shard blade or threnody shade. We've had Wob saying that regrowth could potentially enable a trans person to fully physically transition, but could gold be used the same way? Electrum, which got switched with brass, stores determination. It also starts us into the we just don't know a lot territory. Electrum ferrochemists are called pinnacles and become depressed or unmotivated when storing, then can tap to enter a manic state, instant in the zone. We know soothing parlors exist in Mistborn Era 2. Could unsealed metal mines like Electrum be used in the future the same way we use antidepressants? Last is the spiritual quadrant, which not even ferrochemical scholars know much about so far. Chromium stores fortune. Tap it to get lucky. Kinda. Hoid, while not necessarily with chromium, apparently uses the same underlying mechanic as a spinner to end up wherever he needs to be. Other uses of fortune, perhaps with ferrochemy, potentially allow a user to see into the future via the spiritual realm. A Nicrosil soul bearer is able to store investiture. Like we talked about in the beginning, ferrochemists don't use investiture from any shard, apart from the little bit that all native Scatrians have, but are instead able to manipulate and redirect their own innate investiture. With most other ferrochemical powers, that innate investiture gets filtered through whatever the metal is attuned to. Speed, memory, or carbs. When filling a Nicrosil mind, the entire stream gets poured in, meaning the user no longer has access to their innate investiture, which is their ability to be a ferrochemist. Nicrosil then doesn't just store investiture, because technically all metal mines do that. Nicrosil stores the person's ability to use investiture. This, in combination with a device known only as an excisor, is how unkeyed metal mines are made. Nicrosil mines have also been confirmed to be able to store the divine breath of a Nalthian returned. Not sure if that would just kill them or what. And the ability to use night radiant surges. Meaning, with a Nicrosil mine, you could, for example, use the surges of gravitation and adhesion without having to bond a spren. Sound familiar? Then we come to aluminum, which everywhere else in the Cosmere is basically the anti-investiture metal. Wipes Mistborn metal reserves, blocks span reads, interferes with all sorts of Cosmere healing, and can't be forged, awakened, or affected by surges. With ferrochemy, though, aluminum stores identity. Essentially, your spiritual DNA, your own personal fingerprint that makes everything that's yours actually yours. A ferrochemist who can use aluminum is called a true self, because they can store their identity and then, I guess, 
get it back later. We don't know what effect this actually has on a user, except that it would enable a full ferrochemist to create unkeyed metal mines. A metal mine that any ferrochemist with the appropriate power could tap. Basically removing the spiritual encryption that typically makes metal mines yours. We don't know if this spiritual identity is at all related to physical genetics, though. Brandon has rayfoed whether identical twins could share metal mines or not. Duralumin stores connection. Its users are connectors. We're not talking about sticking Legos together here, though, but Cosmere connection. Essentially, spirit webs. I went over spirit webs in my Roshar investiture video, but basically, whenever you form a relationship with someone, or even something or some place, a spiritual thread is laid that connects you and that noun. As that relationship deepens, the thread becomes thicker and stronger. A connector is able to store that spiritual connection in a Duralumin mind, decreasing the strength of those threads and consequently diminishing the strength of those relationships, making people trust them less or even just be less aware of them. Tapping connection would enable a user to form trust relationships more easily, or even establish artificial connection between people. If you've read Oathbringer, you've seen connection manipulation at work. That's how Tightbutt is able to speak and even make word plays in his non-native tongue. In fact, playing with connection is usually how Hoyd blends in so well on different shard worlds. I'll probably go deeper into these fundamental spiritual elements later on. Connection, fortune, identity. But I'm curious as to exactly how selective a Duralumin fairy chemist can be. Can they store or tap connection to specific individuals? Uh, categories of people, like family or co-workers? Would those categories be transferable in an unsealed metal mind? Or if you store connection to your mother, other, would another person be able to tap that to increase the strength of the relationship with theirs? That finishes out the ferrochemical table, but there's actually one more metal we know of that has ferrochemical application. Atium. The mythical metal of the final empire and god metal of ruin is able to store youth. Fill it to be however much older, then tap it to be that much younger. Useful if you want to visit a bar if you're underage, or finally be allowed back in the McDonald's play place. Since you get out what you put in, there's no net change in age. So used alone, you don't really get any long-term benefit. Really, like all ferrochemical powers. But if a person happens to be an allomancer as well, things can start to get really interesting, which we'll talk about later. Thanks for watching! If you haven't yet, please subscribe! If you're still stuck in quarantine, how about binging all my other videos? If you want to know more about the Mistborn magics, you'll have to read and find out. Burp.